I am so delighted to be with these two beautiful beings that I met when I was in Sedona, Arizona. And it's Alexander Schieffer and his beloved Rama Mani. And they are coming to us from Europe. And so we are going to find out all about what they are doing with Home for Humanity and their connection to the Holo movement. And I want to say also, you guys led the most beautiful closing ceremony. Uh, nobody wanted it to end, um, <laughs> but you you gave us a beautiful completion. So thank you for that. Please thank you. tell our Awakening World audience all about who you are and what you're doing. Mm. We are so happy to be here. And it feels like such a beautiful continuity card to what we experienced together in the Igniting Holo Movement gathering, celebration to... Um, really bring this dream into reality. And for us, it really felt like the highest dream of what led us to join forces mm. uh, some years ago and bring our transformative work, which we had done in interconnected but separate realms and overlapping realms uh, together. It really felt like the highest dream, which at that point was articulated in what we call our humanity charter, which was co-drafted by in thousands of our mm -hmm. change makers from very diverse cultures, ages, backgrounds around the world. It felt like the Holo movement really um, was seeing that, yeah, that come into being mm -hmm. of us coming together to, to bring to reality this vision of living from a space of the interconnected wholeness of being and from that space creating an earth civilization for all life, uh, for humanity and unity uh, to, to, um, to live and embody that. So that's what yeah. uh, we felt about that and that's really what our Home for Humanity movement is about. Yeah, we indeed, we, we did find from the very beginning this enormous resonance with the intention of the whole movement it almost felt like homecoming because mm. it was nourishing um i would say a vision that we are holding also in our own ways through the home for humanity movement and the home for humanity um the movement has grown um, scott after many many years of transformative work literally around the globe on every continent working with pioneers of regeneration across all sectors of society and looking for these embodied places that on the one hand created home for agents of transformation to make their contributions in their own cultures and societies, but on the other hand also came together with a responsibility for our shared Earth home, for our home planet. And so home to home, rather than nation to nation, home to home, each one in, in his or her own embodied way with the local community, making a holistic contribution to a new paradigm. And bringing that all together is a dream. These different Earth citizens building homes for humanity is a dream and aspiration and work of home for humanity. Mm. And that what we see on an even larger meta scale happening in the whole movement, and that's where we found uh, simply this heart, mind, soul resonance. What's your perspective being in Europe about the awakening of consciousness? Is it, are you noticing it just in your own immediate community or in the larger realm? What's, what's the report from Europe? Hmm. It, probably we have our pulse more on the heart of Mother Earth than on specifically Europe, because we are closest um, collaborators are in Africa, Asia, Middle East, and of course, those around us. So if we could duck from your question of on, on my side, specifically from the pulse in Europe and tick into what is the pulse right now of humanity at this point on in Mother Earth, it does feel like this yearning to awaken in that some, it's almost like a lid has been lifted, which was um, keeping down the yearning to awaken and this yearning to reconnect to our fundamental unity, to live our true humanity, which is really what 
home for humanity is in service to, you know, that every one of us has this knowing of our unity and we've sort of forgotten it or been distracted from it or been kept so busy we couldn't awaken to it. So we feel that coming up. We feel that also very strongly in Europe, but we can feel there's kind of an ambivalence here. You know, there's a lot of awakening, probably similar to what you're seeing in America in the last years. And there's a lot of fear and keeping our heads down and being caught in the rush, the press of, of what's in the moment. Um, I would yes. so say, um, Rama, to build on this, I mean, certainly uh, Europe is by no means anywhere close to what once was the European Renaissance. But there is definitely a strike of awakening. We always find, Scott, working around the world, that the big shifts usually don't happen in the center of power, but somewhere in the periphery. And equally in Europe, you find it a bit more in the periphery on minorities in countries like Slovenia, or what we can be just coming back from Croatia, or the, um, the um, Scandinavian countries, where we often find more impulses than coming out of straight out of the center. Yet, like Greece, but I want to mention, we bring so often students here into this Home for Humanity in France. And one particular student group also coming from the University of St. Gallen, which is very driven to become, you know, young people becoming leaders in organizations. And we are astonished, Scott, that in mm. this young generation, you know, in the right context in frame, the yearning and longing and aspiration to grow, to awaken. And in fact, there is a codedness of the future in them, which is stronger than then say we working so long already on this awakening stream, I find it's already beautifully placed in it. But the conditions are often not very healthy to bring that fully to the fore. You know, I was smiling and thinking, <laughs> as you said that, that all of our colleagues in the whole room would have loved it. There was, I think last year, where this group of students who came, there were more young men than women. Mm. And from the beginning, because our humanity charter starts with, you know, humanity and unity and then goes on to how we come together you know, into the, the emerging paradigm of the interconnected wholeness of, of being. So really kind of the Bohemian uh, unity. And all of these young men were, were, you know, who are football stars and so on, were singing humanity in unity, humanity in unity. And it was just lovely, you know, planting trees and, and stepping into this future. Perhaps what we would really like to share as well about what excited us in terms of also the timing of the ignition of the Holo movement is mm. literally that this year we had this very strong feeling that the Home for Humanity movement had grown during this COVID period. I think all of us in this time are experiencing this acceleration, us mm. finding each other, us finding the spirit that was so alive in the whole of movement of deep co-creation from the soul and the spirit and, and embodied mm. co-creation. And we received at our during our New Year silent meditation between Christmas and the first couple of weeks of the year, this huge vision, literally, and then we got invited right then into the whole of movement uh, by Emmanuel and, and, and everyone there. Literally, the vision is over the next seven years that Home for Humanity ignites and invites and convenes a, a journey around our beloved Earth planet to every country so that this, what you're working for, what we are all working for, this global awakening can be of all of us and all of the genius and the gifts, the, the wisdom mm -hmm. And the suffering and the transformation and the dark nights can be of all of us together, creating together this future. So it's really our big contribution and our commitment uh, is that we will go on this journey, inviting many others, all the, you know, Holo Movement is already a part of it, uh, to join us. But we are committed that for the next seven years, we are on the road, curating are uh, seeding, listening, honoring, healing, uh, holding, uh, so that this new earth mm. can come into being. 
my last question for both of you, and it's so wonderful to hear from you and to feel your energy. How have you personally transformed? How is your personal transformation going? I know that's a, a big question. Mm -hmm. but Thank you. You have like a minute to share your own personal transformation as it relates to our awakening world and, and the whole movement and all of us really coming into connection together. Mm -hmm. Indeed, I mean, Scott, you asked the uh, the uh, the whole night question, but to come into it, there is just a deep understanding that a new story is coming through us. And we feel that on a very profound level. And in the work, in the transformative awakening work we've done in the past 30 years, on my side, I felt this enormous urge for higher levels of embodiment so that this whole new spirit can really land and out of that came this whole vision of home for humanity that means what we cannot live what i can't teach anything that i can't live so in a way the awakening process was also one of soaring ourselves in the very heart of embodying the spirit that wants to land and to make ourselves um, as transparent as possible in this process where we teach and educate and guide processes, but yet we are in our home part of it so that out of that, the co-arising of many other embodiments can emerge. I would say that's at the heart of, mm. of my own transformation, this becoming uh, the journey towards incarnation of what wants to manifest. And I have to give tribute because I know you are today in Ashland to Jean Houston because she yes. always said, what is not visceral, what is not really in your intestines will not shine through and will not be able to radiate mm -hmm. and to manifest. So that's at the heart mm -hmm. of the process. Mm -hmm. So maybe picking up on that, so really paying tribute to Jean, who we are honored to have as the co-chair of Home for Humanity. Mm -hmm. uh, and we see the One Home journey as being really you know, lifting her social artistry into earth artistry, inviting every earth citizen mm. to come home, you know, as the last unity earth theme uh, to their inner home of who they really are, mm. to the local home, of our cultures, our communities in service of the earth home. And to respond to your question for me, this year, which then brought us to Holo Movement, the big theme was this complete surrender to Gaia and to the cosmos and really feeling at this point, it's, mm -hmm. yes, my life is in service to the birthing of this new world and what that requires of us is this being at home so we can receive this guiding. And to really, it's also a commitment that my awakening uh, is can only be fulfilled if it's in service of, you know, mm -hmm. this, pilgrimage around the earth so that everyone's awakening, you know, being there to honor their awakening through the pains that our earth is going through, but also through this beautiful renaissance of what we are truly capable of. So it's mm. that, that this mothering of all these awakenings and a complete surrender mm. to, to that. I'm so lifted by not just your words, but the the knowing that I feel within those words. There's a knowing, as you're sharing, that is inspiring. And how wonderful to meet you both in Sedona uh, and to connect with you. Let us stay. I know we'll stay in close connection. I'd love to have you on the Awakening World again uh, so our audience can get to know you more fully. Um, and, of course, we'll see you in Ibiza next year. And hopefully maybe our paths will yes. be here or there before then. Mm. We would love to have you and our beloved Jasmine Bear right here at Home for Humanity. If, if you get me, you them. get her too. It would definitely be both. <laughs> yeah, so so please, Scott, from my side, I want to close by saying this is indeed a standing invitation for you both to come if, if the winds carry you here. The second thing, it's so powerful because looking into the screen, you see the global and the tribe. And you are the piece in the middle. Mm -hmm. So that's the embodiment. The other thing that I saw, it's so powerful because there's this sun behind you. Yeah. But in a way, because your head covers the round, you look like Liberty statue. You see only the rays coming out of you. It's, <laughs> it's very powerful. 
<laughs> Thank you. I have noticed that, but you're the first person to comment on it, so that's beautiful. Much love to you. So good to meet you again. Thank you so much. And have a 